Hi friends, it's Joan at Ten Pentacles Tarot, and today I'm going to review for you the Numinous Astro Deck. Um, and before you turn this off because you don't want to hear about an astrology deck, <coughs> this one's quite a bit different, and this one can also be used as an oracle deck. So hang in there, you might end up really liking it. So this Astro Deck is pretty big. It comes in a box that's like... This is a regular size Oracle deck, so you see how, how much bigger it is. The cards aren't that big, it's just the box. Okay, so um, this is a two-piece top and bottom box of sturdy cardboard. It says 45 card astrology deck and guidebook by Ruby Warrington, founder of the Numinous with Beth Matassa. And the size of the bo box look like this. It's published by Sterling Ethos. And the back says, well, first, it's $24.95 in the U.S., $33.95 in Canada. It says, the Numinous Astro Deck has been created by popular spiritual speaker and author Ruby Warrington as an astrological learning tool. As you're discovering and decoding a birth chart and deciphering this complex and nuanced art, you're invited to think of these cards as signposts to help guide you along the way. The deck contains 45 cards, each one providing an overview of the traits associated with its sign, house, planet, or aspect, and including a specially designed illustration that brings the teachings to life. In the companion book, Warrington, founder of The Numinous, and her co-author, astrologer Beth Matassa, explain how to use the cards for birth chart interpretation as well as for divination as an oracle deck. All right, so this box says 821. I know the date inside says um, it was originally copyrighted in 2019, but this uh, box set was apparently um, a 2021 deck. All right, so we take the top off. The inside, ooh, pretty, says the particles of stardust from which our soul is woven, the numinous, is the unknowable essence of our being. And there's a little explanation about that that I'll share with you here in a minute. All right, so let's look at the guidebook first. This is a soft cover, glossy uh, guidebook. This is what the back looks like, it's stars. And uh, let's see what's in it. Okay, so we have table of contents. Yes, this says copyright 2019, but like I said, the box says 2021. All right, so we have table of contents, introduction by Ruby Warrington. What is astrology? What is numinous astrology? And I'm going to just read you a paragraph here so you can get a better idea of what this is about. The word numinous means that which is unknown or unknowable. For me, meaning um, Ruby Warrington, it speaks to everything within the realm of our experience that cannot be quantified, explained, or contained. Our intuition and our sweeping feeling states. Our connection to the cosmos and the universe within. Astrology was the first language I discovered to try to describe these elements of being human, a way to frame a conversation of how it felt to me. For example, there are ways to describe my experience of having my son in the sign of Aries. But if a picture contains a thousand words, then a feeling is a kaleidoscope of these images, shifting with the light as external events cause me to alter my perspective. Astrology helps me navigate what's real on multiple levels, the facts of life, and the feelings they give rise to. If the science part of astrology can look like a bunch of complicated diagrams and charts, then the numinous piece of the equation lies in my intuitive interpretation of these elements. Your intuition speaks to you through your body, and as you dip into this deck, we invite you to bring all five senses to the table, to allow your imagination to conjure images, sounds, tastes, and smells to bring each card to life. For example, think of the feeling on your of the feeling on your skin and in your blood before a lightning storm, and you're summoning Aquarian energy of rupture, change, and genius breakthroughs. Imagine biting into a piece of tropical fruit, the juice running joyously down your chin, and you've tapped the Leo vibe of explosive pleasure and play. Using your hour prompts to guide you, trust there is no right or wrong way to interpret each part of your chart and that what you see is exactly what you're supposed to. Okay, so that gives you a little idea of what this deck is about. So it talks about astrology for the now age, how to read your birth chart, the puzzle pieces of chart interpretation. I'm going to be super interested. I've not read this yet, so I'm going to look forward to that. The planets, the signs, the houses, the aspects. 
and then getting started. Pro tips for diving in. Start with what you know. Remember that it's elemental. There are no bad charts or bad, bad placements. When in doubt, pan out. In other words, look at the big picture. And then live your chart. Then how to use the cards for chart interpretation and for divination. All right. So the cards description start with the signs. And we have... Um, like, for example, Aries is the first sign, so we Aries the fire starter, gives you keywords, and then it's quality, element, planet, house, symbol, body part, color, metal, gemstone, and city. I did not know that the signs had a city, but Aries is New York. Um, sense, style, and tarot card. All right, and then when you pull this card, this is your divinatory message. Okay, so it has that for all the signs. And then it goes through um, the planets, and then and the descriptions of the cards are basically the same. For planets, it has their sign, uh, their house, the tarot card, the orbit length, which for Neptune is 165 years. That's pretty interesting. It changes signs every two and a half years, and their retrograde motion when it goes into retrograde. So that's the planets. And then it has North Node, the Numinous, um, Ascendant, and then the Houses, 1 through 12, and then the Aspects. All right, so it's all the cards. And we'll do a one-card pull at the end so you can see exactly how the book is written to see if this is something you're interested in. But before we do that, let's take a look at the cards. And the box has two um, nice hard plastic compartments for the cards. And the cards actually, when you put them in, they don't like overflow into the next compartment, which I like that. I don't like it when it does that. All right, so let's look at the cards. So this is what the back looks like. There's a T at the top and N at, N at the bottom. I mean, they're not reversible because there aren't any reverse meanings. So that's like not a thing. And then they're glossy. They are medium, medium to heavyweight. And uh, we'll see how they shuffle. But first, let's take a look at the cards. Okay, so we have um, the title of the card at the top. There's a keyword here or a uh, name like Aries which is the fire starter. And then there's a list of um, keywords here. So I'll just say, and then the artwork is really interesting. Cool. It looks like a lot. It, there is no artist mentioned, so I'm assuming that Ruby Warrington or... Beth Matassa or both uh, did the artwork. I don't see any illustrators listed. Um, okay, so we got Aries, the fire starter, Taurus, the bombshell, Gemini, the butterfly, uh, Cancer, the doula, Leo, the lover, Virgo, the alchemist, Libra, the idealist, Scorpio, the powerhouse, Sagittarius, the Voyager, Capricorn, the Boss, Aquarius, the Radical, Pisces, the Mystic, and then we have to start with the planets. The Sun is Being, Moon, Feelings, Mercury, Communication, Venus, Love, Mars, Action, Jupiter, Expansion, Saturn, Wisdom, Uranus, Revolution, Pluto, Transformation, Neptune, Dreams, Chiron, Healing, and then we have Ascendant, Outlook, North Node, Destiny, The Numinous, Mystery. Then we have the houses. First house is Self, second house, Assets, third house, Perception, fourth house, Roots, fifth house, Passion, sixth house, craft, 7th house, relating, 8th house, intimacy, ninth house, seeking, 10th house, reputation, 11th house, the edge, 12th house, surrender. Then we have conjunction, empowerment, opposition, balance, square, challenge, trine, flow, sextile, opportunity, semi-sextile, allowing, and quincunx, complexity. And I wonder why they didn't have south node in here. That's not one of the cards. Hmm. Very interesting. 
All right, so let's see how they shuffle. There's 44 cards, so they should be able to shuffle pretty easily. We'll do the riffle and see how they do. Okay, yep, they don't stick together at all. Let's try that again. And like I said, we'll pull a one card so you can um, see how this will be as an oracle deck. It's kind of cool because it's like, two, you know, you can use it for two things, for learning about astrology and as an oracle deck. All right, Spirit, what does the viewer need to think about or keep in mind right now? What does the viewer need to think about or keep in mind? We got Jupiter, and the keyword for Jupiter is expansion. So let's see what that means to you or for you. Now, at the bottom of each card, there's a list of keywords, like I said, and in the middle is the um, is the image, which is a Ferris wheel, and then there's dice, and a rainbow, and some clouds, and then there's Jupiter in the background. Okay, so the keyword is expansion, and uh, the keywords at the bottom are enthusiasm, optimism, generosity, benevolence, beliefs, luck, seeking, travel, positivity, lectures, foreign cultures, teaching, pilgrimage, chance, expansion, leaping, exploration, and potential. So that is, uh, those. that's everything on the card. All right, so then let's look up Jupiter in the book, and I'm going to read you the, um, the, oh, there it is, okay. All right, there is Jupiter, okay. So, um, it says, well, I'm going to do the divinatory meaning first, when you pull this card, okay? Jupiter swoops in when we need to reconnect to the exhilarating, untamable sensation of simply, simply being alive. What is juicy and pulsating and begging for you to place your bets on it with no fear of loss. What is juicy and pulsating and begging for you to place your bets on it with no fear of loss? Where are you feeling stuck to a certain pattern of behavior or way of thinking that's left you feeling parched? Jupiter asks us to expand both our consciousness and our physical container, to loosen any laced up shoulds and summon the courage to enjoy our life. This card wants you to trust that luck comes to those who are ready to take a gamble in the first place. And then it gives you a journal prompt, which says, plan your dream vacation complete with mood boards and outfits. Well, that sounds kind of fun. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the first part where it says um, the keywords and the other stuff about Jupiter. So this is what, so all you would need to read really if you were doing the divinatory, uh, the, you know, um, using it for divination as an oracle deck, what I just read you would be the meaning for the person you're reading for or for yourself. But also, this is the other information. So, keywords, gamble, faith, wildness, excess, spillage, voyage, philosophy, abundance, goodwill, searching, unfolding, adventure, higher education, exaggeration, hypocrisy, and religion. Okay, so the signs for Jupiter are Sagittarius and Pisces. Um, it is... Um, Pertaining to house number nine, the tarot card is Wheel of Fortune, which makes sense that it's a Ferris wheel on the picture. Um, its orbit is 12 years to orbit around the sun. It changes signs once every year, and it goes into retrograde once a year for about five months. Okay, it says, get ready to ride, cries Jupiter, with banners unfurled and bags packed, this pumped-up pony of a planet is always ready to race into an unfolding adventure that goes on and on far beyond the break of dawn. Jupiter wants us to step into the funhouse and take a gamble on our larger-than-life visions and untamable dreams. Think of Jupiter as your cosmic weekend in Vegas, urging you to sidle up to the roulette wheel and roll the dice. Our life is an endless buffet with seconds and thirds of every cuisine under the sun. Impetuous, impulsive, and always the last to leave the party, Jupiter can show us where we've gone too far and stayed out too late. In our charts, Jupiter reveals where we can tend toward excess and where losing our footing can actually help us find our faith. This planet might as well have coined the credo, the universe has got your back. But to truly believe in this philosophy, we've got to slip away from solid ground and learn how to leap without even looking. And that is putting me in mind of the full card in the tarot. 
All right, so that is how the book is written. And, you know, I think this is so cool because even though you can use it to learn uh, about astrology, obviously, uh, you can also use it as an oracle deck, which I like a lot. I think that's really cool. All right, friends, that was my review of the Numinous Astro Deck by Ruby Warrington with Bess Matassa. And it is published by Sterling Ethos. And it was in 2021. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so. It's completely free for you. And it helps me out a whole lot. And there are over 600. I believe it's this is the 612th video. So you have lots and lots to choose from. I've got um, readings on there. Pick a card readings. Uh, there are uh, astrological sign readings. There are um, deck reviews, oracle decks, and tarot deck reviews. Um, there is a 10-lesson series on how to read tarot for beginners. So lots and lots of stuff. I think you'll enjoy it. So, friends, I want to thank you for being with me today. I appreciate you so much more than you'll ever know. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever it is where you are. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.